Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fies again from Central New Mexico Community College. In this video D of the endocrine system, we're going to take a closer look at what kinds of stimuli can trigger the release of hormones. There are three types of stimuli that can trigger the release of hormones. And we refer to these types of stimuli as either humoral, hormonal, and neural. And usually this is all regulated by means of a negative feedback mechanism, but it can also happen that we see a positive feedback mechanism. In anatomy, anytime you see that root humor, it refers to usually a body fluid. So what it's referring to is a stimulus that is present in the body fluid. Most often we're referring to the concentration of some kind of a solute present in blood or even lymph. And you know plenty of examples of this. For instance, I'm going to start at the bottom here. We've learned that the levels of sodium can impact what kinds of hormones are going to be released. If, if um, we see that the sodium levels in our blood are decreasing, then aldosterone will be released via the um, renin-angiotensin mechanism in an attempt to bring up our sodium levels and therefore typically also bring up our blood volume and blood pressure. Um, when we see an increase in sodium, we see the release of uh, atrio atrionatriuretic peptide by the heart. And then depending on what the levels of glucose are, we're going to see either the release of insulin or glucagon by the pancreas. By now, you've also seen examples of how one hormone can trigger the release of another hormone. Think of the renin-angiotensin mechanism, where we start with renin and ultimately can end up with the release of aldosterone and ADH. And angiotensin II, once it has been formed, can trigger the release of even more angiotensin II. So there we see an example of a positive feedback. The hypothalamus releases a hormone called thyroid hormone releasing hormone. So this is thyroid hormone releasing hormone. Seems like a, a redundant name for a hormone, but that's what we call them. Um, when they're released by the hypothalamus. That hormone released by the hypothalamus is then going to be able to stimulate the release of thyroid stimulating hormone from our anterior, anterior pituitary. And the TSH secreted by the anterior pituitary will then trigger the release of thyroid hormone by the thyroid gland. All right, and there will be many examples like this where a hormone will trigger the release of another hormone. And in this case, another hormone can trigger the release of yet another hormone. And finally, we're all quite familiar already with how the nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, can override many controls, including those of the endocrine system. And shown earlier uh, in a previous video, I showed you how your sympathetic preganglionic fibers can control the adrenal glands to secrete norepinephrine and epinephrine. So in summary, there are three types of stimuli that can control the release of hormones. Either some solute inside of the blood or even the lymph is going up in concentration or down in concentration and that can trigger the release of a particular hormone. Or a hormone triggers the release of another hormone by another gland. And finally, the sympathetic nervous system can also trigger the release of hormones. So we have humoral stimuli, we have hormonal stimuli, and we have neural stimuli.